we've talked about the divisions in, in this country. I mean, with the Civil War obviously was a time of just horrific divisions. The 1970s, there were a lot of divisions, 60s and 70s, and which there's you cover so much in in your book, in your newest book, but. Was the country more divided then, or do you think it's more divided now? I sense? think it's more divided now than really? any time in my lifetime, really since the Civil War. We were divided over issues, maybe the Vietnam War, isolationism, interventionism, race, civil rights. But this is like identity. People who are in one party and the other feel like that's their life. It's, just, it's a different thing than we've seen before. It wasn't that way before. I don't think so. I mean, I just saw an incredible statistic that people were asked in 1958, do you care whether your daughter marries a Republican or a Democrat? And a small percentage cared, but 72% said they didn't care. Either mm. way, it was okay. 2020, same question, 79% of people are married to people in the same party. Wow. So somehow parties become uh, who we are. Uh -huh. One of the things that good old George Washington warned against in his farewell address. He said he was afraid of the baneful effects of party, and he warned people against mm. that because it could produce divisions. And he actually, every year, they read in the Senate this farewell address. It's 7,000 words. Mm. If only they'd adhere to it. They just read it, and then yeah. they go back and become divided parties again. Teddy warned against, Teddy, I shouldn't say Teddy, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, my guy, <laughs> warned against. He said, if people begin to think of each other, as, as the other rather than as common American citizens when they're divided by party or region or section, then we're going to be losing our democracy. Then democracy is in peril. And somehow that's happened.